Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Silva and uh, this is my presentation on the Project One Sprite Mover. Uh, you can see here my URL to my Git repo. Um, YouTube video will be added in using Unity version 2019.2.17 F1. First objective, Sprite, Import, and Display. So we're going to switch over here to Unity. Uh, you see I've got a Sprite folder here. Um, my starship and it is set to sprite 2D and UI. I click on the starship, see the sprite renderer, and it is a sprite right there. For the next objective, get key down or get button down. So we'll go over here to our scripts. right here we got the get key down and that's set to the space bar and that will call the center sprite function which we'll go over here in a little bit also got the uh, get key down set over here on my additive movement function which we'll also cover in a few moments. We got get key or get button or get axis next. So here we go, this is my I set some variables to get the axis on my X and Y. Um, set my horizontal and vertical values for my sprite mover. And then multiply it by time delta time and move speed. Also set uh, the get key on a uh, shift toggle for my additive movement. Um, and so when the shift key is held down, we'll continue to register that, and the additive movement will uh, work properly. Direct movement by setting a position is the next objective, and. Uh, back to our center sprite. Um, once again when I press the space bar it'll call that function and then set the transform position of my player sprite to 0 on the x axis and 0 on the y axis. And what that does is it takes my transform position and sets it to the vector 2 dot 0 which is shorthand for 0 0 for x and y. And I'll demonstrate that when I move my player around, when I add some face, you can see it jumps to the center of the screen. And now on to the added a movement by adding the movement vector to position. Uh, so once again I set the toggle on the shift key and here in my code you'll see that if I um, hold down the left shift key or the right shift key it will call the additive movement and then down to this uh, additive movement function I have some more if statements if um, while holding shift, I press down the A or the left arrow, takes my transform position and sets it to the transform position plus vector 3 dot left, which is one unit to the left. And then I did that for each of the directional inputs. And that will allow my sprite to move by one unit in whatever direction I am specifying. And demonstrate that. Regular movement, left and right. And now if I'm holding the shift key, and you can see it's kind of jumping by one unit increments.
Next objective is the movement speed, public, and the inspector. So, back to my code. Did a serialized field. You could also do a public float. Um, and that move speed, and I initially set it to 15. Uh, the F for the float. And that allows us to um, adjust that sprite movement speed in the inspector. So back in Unity, you got I got my Starship selected, and there you see the sprite mover script gives me that move speed field and the padding field, which I will cover a little bit later why I added that. So to demonstrate, uh, most be 15. This is moving pretty, pretty good there. Bring that down and stop typing in the wrong box. Put that back down to one. Back in the game. There you see it slowed down considerably now. At a five speed. Simultaneous key presses. Uh, you've kind of seen this already with the, the shift toggle, but we'll demonstrate up and down, left and right at the same time. Kind of gives you an angle movement. Um, and again, I added the movement shift and the arrow keys at the same time. Mono behavior enabled and disabled is next on the list. Um, so what I did is I created a script called uh, called pause movement, and um, for that I stored a variable uh, in a boolean, uh, which is either true or false, and I named that is paused. And I set that to false uh, right away. So on the update, uh, if you hold down or push down the P key, uh, this will uh, disable and enable the sprite. It's a toggle to disable and enable the, the sprite mover script when a B button is pressed. And if my is paused variable does not equal true, which is initially set to false, then uh, it will disable the sprite mover and set pause state to true with this get component sprite mover dot enabled equals false, and then I set is paused to true. When the P button is pressed, and if is paused is true, then my else statement is going to run. And that will um, enable the sprite script, the sprite mover script, and set my pause state back to false. So back in my game, you can see this moving freely, and I hit the P button.
button and it stops my movement. It disables that mono behavior on the sprite mover script. do um, since uh, can't tell if I'm actually hitting the button or just stopping on the keyboard I'll add this um, I'll just add a uh, debug log um, Tab it out, and uh, we'll say uh, game is paused. for the resume as well. So resume movement. That way you can see when I actually hit that P button and actually toggle that movement or that mono script behavior, that mono behavior. So the instructions uh, clearly they stated that um, toggling this is going to break the game. But what I did is I created a an actual um, toggle, uh, and I stored a variable in Starship a game object, and at the start um, the game locates a game object with the, the uh, tag the player tag which I'll assign to my player sprite um, and here I can show you there is the tag the player tag then on the update if the Q button is pressed down the starship will be toggled between active and inactive um, so if the Q button is pressed, well, again, that said, uh, we will break the game. So, what I did is I actually put that script on the main camera because if I put it on the player sprite um, and then I toggle it, 
Obviously, I wouldn't be able to access that script any longer, and so that's why I put that. Uh, and the game quitter as well on the main camera, uh, in case I want to toggle off the ship and still quit the game. I can do that. And so that's the reason I put those two scripts in a, in a different location. Uh, so, and that's why I targeted that game object uh, with a player tag. And so when I get that uh, key code, uh, get key down on the key, key, if the starship is active, it will become inactive. So if it's uh, active in the hierarchy, the game object is active in the hierarchy, then uh, we'll we will set the starship uh, to inactive or set active false. And if that is already inactive, then it will become active again with the starship set active to true. And so I didn't want to just break the game, I wanted to create a functioning toggle to uh, set active, set inactive. And let's do another debug log. Yeah, I guess it's not really necessary to do this because the object is going to completely disappear. I will say, hey, where'd you go? And uh, there it is. Toggle that again. There it is. And so I can toggle that off and on as much as I like because it's not attached to the starship. So it doesn't actually break the game, it is now a feature of the game. Now, on to application quit. Of course, this will have to be tested with the executable but as with the other scripts we can just run a debug log uh, to prove that I'm pushing that button and so I have my game quitter script And like I said, that game quitter is also attached to the, the main camera so that I can run that even if my player is inactive. And this will quit the application when the escape button is pushed as defined in uh, my project settings. And so, see input get button, uh, get button down set to quit. And that will run application quit. And in my... Um, project settings the input right, you see here I got horizontal and all those values set my vertical and all those values set I probably should have reduced uh, this I don't need all these fields here you can see my quit there down at the bottom but let's see I have it set to escape name quit um, just like the examples in our lessons let's reduce this and get this all fixed up back to my quit settings and that 
zero values. Okay. So, once again, I can't really show that here. Um, so let's go and put that debug log in. ended when I toggle that quit button, the escape button. And let's run it. And then escape game is ended. So uh, in the executable of course that game will the application will quit. And that will be included in my deliverables. Um, you can see that it was bugging hair free, I was running debug logs. Uh, my comments, you can see comments on all my scripts. I tried to be very thorough with that. Hopefully I met uh, all the parameters with that. And game exceeds the minimum requirements. Uh, so this is where we'll go into some of the extra things that I did. Um, Primarily the background, the scrolling background, and you may not be able to see it very well, but in that background, pull it out the same view so you can see it, there's a particle effect called star field, so it's a far and a near, and it creates kind of a layered, uh, very interesting effect. the sound, get rid of the sprite. You can kind of see the dots floating in there. Some are slow, some are fast. Um, so that was a feature uh, that I can't take total credit for because uh, I was uh, taking a new Udemy course and I got some of this information from that uh, and just utilized it. But what I did here is I took the the uh, background scroll speed, I set a, a public float to a background scroll speed, set my material and offset my variables declared. And at the start of the game, um, my material is set to uh, get component renderer material. Uh, so that defines a render material for the background. And then I set my offset equal to the new vector 2, uh, 0 on my x axis, and then the background scroll speed on my y axis. And that, of course, passes in that, that value. Now that can be adjusted by the designer. Then on update, it will offset the background material each frame based on the dust scroll speed. You see my material main texture offset plus equals the offset times my time delta time. So each frame is going to check for that offset and then it's going to add that offset and set it to that new vector on the y-axis with the scroll speed. So I really appreciated that fact from uh, another game that I worked on in Udemy. And I really wanted to add that in and marry it to this code here. And if we go in the inspector, uh, you can see uh, Quad mesh, I, I, I can't exactly say why, I don't know, but it's supposed to set this quad mesh. But there you can see the renderer. 
uh, set to this nebula red. This is the pattern here. And the material is set. There's a background scroller with the scroll speed. And here you can see the offset on the background. So on the X, if I if I move this around, you see you could toggle the background uh, on the horizontal. Um, but because I set the offset on the Y axis, we get that vertical offset, and that will just keep going. Kind of like an infinite background scroller. I like those old school games. So. If you are 80 baby, you had old school scrollers like that. Um, and then of course I added my audio, uh, my space sounds, and here's where I got my assets, my additional uh, stuff. The Unity Asset Store. There's a lot of great free features. So I got my dynamic space background light from 10V Studio. That's the the background um, patterns, colors. 8-bit retro rampage is where I got my audio uh, from the free edition and that's by Guy Go Cockcroft. That's the outer space rumble. And then the Udemy course that I took was the complete C Sharp Unity Developer 2D Learn to Code Making Games by Ben Tristam and Rick Davidson. And so there was a lot of cool stuff there. And if you ever have a chance to get on Udemy and check those out, highly recommend it. And for my organization as well, as a requirement. You can see I got my main camera background, Starship. Um, and for my background, I have my star fields far and near. All my folders, my art folders for the background, prefabs, background, and star fields. My main scene, all my scripts sound effects, and my sprites. So, a little bit extra, and I hope that meets all the requirements necessary, and that's my, that's my sprite mover project. Now let's just go through this list one more time to make sure. Now the baby wants to play the game. Yep, so we covered all of this. This all looks good. Um, didn't break the game because we toggled. Okay. Sprite import. We had the sprite. Get key down. We had get access. Get key. Movement by setting position, additive movement by adding movement vector to position. Um, let me check that again, just to be sure. And here you can see position vector, adding position to vector, vector to position. Movement speed, public and inspector. Simultaneous key presses using and or or we covered that. Uh, model behavior enabled and disabled. Game object set to active. Uh, application quit, error free, comments, organized logic and structure, and meets minimal requirements. So I believe that covers everything. And that is my Sprite Mobile Project, Project 1.